How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Six Killer. Welcome back to Shinrai Broken Beyond Despair. It's time to pick up where we left off because there was no real good stopping point. We're in the middle of uh, learning about Re Miyamoto. I assume we're going to learn about Runa, yeah. Runa Hikari. Age 15, club calligraphy, etc. So we made it to the hotel in the last episode. That's it. That's all that's happened. And we learned some of the characters. Re Miyamoto and Runa Hikari. The two of them were polar opposites. Whereas the tomboyish Ri was the loud and chaotic type, Runa was the very reserved and refined young lady, giving off the impression that she was the offspring of a noble family. Ironically, however, it was the exact other way around. Runa was the daughter of a fishmonger, and Rai was one whose father was rather wealthy. The Miyamoto family didn't just own this mountain resort, but several all, several all across the country, as well as a few first-class hotels. One couldn't help but wonder if two of them had accidentally been, accidentally been switched at birth. Either way, there were some of the few people I exchanged word with on a regular basis at school. Which is mostly because they like to spend lunch break with us for some reason. Something that always perplexed me, given how unsociable I tended to be. So, is everyone else here already? Yeah? And the two of you, we're finally complete. Nice. So how many are we? All in all, ten people. What? Only 10? Didn't you invite more? I did, but everyone who isn't here yet called earlier saying that they won't make it. Oh, that sucks. I know, right? It's Kenji and his gang. Every single one of them had some other lame excuse. Food poisoning my undead ass. I know they went to Masaki's party instead. Traitorous dogs. Well, at least the most important person's here, so everything's fine. Isn't that right, Miyamoto-san? Let me guess. Taiko-kun? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. That girl. Oh well, I already had figured as much. Of course, she hadn't organized this whole thing just to have some fun with her classmates. Rai wouldn't have been Rai if she didn't have some ulterior motives. You gonna try going after him again? Of course. And this time I'll succeed. Although, it probably won't be as easy as I hoped. And while she said this, her eyes suddenly narrowed with suspicion as they shifted to me. I underestimated you, Raiko Nyan. I didn't think you'd pull some dirty trick like that. Come again? Thanks to those kitty ears, your cuteness levels have shot right through the roof. I have to agree. They make you look extraordinarily adorable, Shin, Shin, Shinpuku-san. Curses, not again. This is so embarrassing. Ah, I should have taken these stupid ears off during the car ride. But don't think that'll be enough to snatch him away from me. I won't lose to you, Raiko Nyan. Taiko's gonna be mine. Don't even try to get close to him. Otherwise... I'll have to nom your brains for real. Going after him wasn't my intention anyway. You should know by now that I don't really care about that kind of stuff. Jeez, why are you so serious? I just wanted to tease you. Try to lighten up a little. If there's anything you should get serious about, it's getting a boyfriend. You know, you're a real cute girl. You'd be less... If you'd be less serious and smile more often, you could have any guy you want. Not this again. Seriously, it was always the same with Rai. Boys seem to be the only topic on her mind. She almost never talked about anything else. I was completely unable to comprehend this. According to her, it was every girl's duty to catch herself a cute boyfriend, but I honestly didn't really care much about romance and all that jazz. Besides, even if I did, all the other guy all the guys in our class were idiots anyway. Except Tycho. He was actually kinda cute. Even I had to admit that. Still, that didn't mean I was after him or anything. Miyamoto san, stop harassing poor Shimpuku san. Just because you are constantly thinking about boys does not mean all of us have to. So you don't care about boys either? That's not what I said. In any case, shouldn't you be worrying more about catching yourself a boyfriend before you start lecturing us? This is not the first time you're trying to conquer Kikai-san's heart, after all. Ha. There's nothing to worry about. This time my plan is 100% foolproof. Taiko is so gonna be mine. Confident as ever, I say. Or maybe delusional would be more a fitting word. Go ahead and make fun of me, but once I've seduced and spent the night with him, you won't be laughing no more. Spent the night with him? You really plan on going that far? Of course. Why do you think I'm dressed like this? Well, now she mentioned her outfit was sure kind of revealing. Her skirt was a little too short and therefore ideal for panty flashing. One wrong move and everything was exposed, and if it hadn't been for that loose hanging necktie, I could have seen her entire cleavage. Her bra was already peeking at me through this one of the many holes over all over her shirt. Seems as though Zombie Rai was dead serious about devouring Taiko's heart. Ultimately, a get-up had one fatal flaw. 
If that's your intention, don't you think you were a little overkill on the makeup part? What? You... You really think so? Well, those wounds look mighty disgusting. Isn't that a major turnoff? See, Miyamoto-san, I told you a zombie wasn't the best costume choice. But, but... Your mouth is distorted by skepticism. Rai managed... began examining herself. She's obviously getting doubts about her outfit choice. And for a zombie with such unusual aspirations, this must have been a rather grave concern. What do you say, Raiko Nyan? You think I overdid it? You're fine as long as Taiko's a necrophile, just get naked. You worry too much, you look perfect. You really think so? Yes. Just go for it and Taiko will surely be yours. Although, you shouldn't spend the night with him because that's illegal, because you're 15. Why do I get the feeling you're just saying that to get revenge on me for teasing you earlier? Wait. Or are you even purposely trying to set me up for failure? I knew it. You want me to make a fool of myself in front of Taiko because you want him for yourself. Well, I won't be fooling for that. And here, I put so much effort into this makeup. But to be honest, the face paint's itchy as hell anyway. It makes me want to tear off my skin for real. So in other words, the face paint was killing her, huh? What's with the puns, man? Jesus, calm down. Well, I guess I'll take a quick shower then. I need to carry your bags to your room anyways. You two want to share one, right? Sure. Alrighty. And hopefully I'll share my room with Taiko-kun tonight. She really was dead set on seducing Taiko, wasn't she? Where's the room anyway? On the third floor. Since we're the only people around here tonight, I thought I'd give you guys a special treatment and let you sleep in the more luxurious guest rooms. What? You serious? Yep. Unlike the regular guest rooms, they even have a shower, a bathtub, and a really big fluffy beds. Nice. Can't wait to see it. Well, you'll get to see it soon enough. But for now, you should probably greet the others while I'll... Uh, try to join the living again, huh? Runa will show you the way. Oh, right. I almost forgot. Rai turned around to the reception counter and reached for a little rectangular paper stand holding a whole bunch of hand-sized booklets. After grabbing one, she faced me again and whipped it against my chest. You should take one of these. It has a little bit of information about the resort in it, as well as a map. Not like this place is so big and complicated you could easily get lost, but you never know. Maybe it might come in handy tonight, who knows? That's supposed to sound ominous, by the way. <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks. Anyways, I'm off. See you in a bit. And just like that, Rai scooted off in a hurry. Our bag's under her arms. Now, apparently, she was dying to take a shower. Good thing I kept these stupid puns to myself. Well, I have to hear them, though. Well then, Shapuki-san? Akadori-san? Should we be on our way? Okay. Taking the lead, Runa left the reception room via the same door uh, Rai had disappeared through. I didn't waste any time, stuffing the pamphlet in my pocket, and together with Barachan, followed our guide. New notebook entries, nice. New diary entry, new character profiles. Resort map, hmm. After leaving the reception, a rather long corridor was stretching out before us. Numerous doors were lining each of its sides, candlestands placed in regular intervals between them. The little flames were bathing the walls in a warm orange glow. It was actually bright enough that Runa didn't bother switching on the ceiling lights, which were partially hidden by the blue curtains above us. Directly to our left were the restrooms, and to our right, two staircases, one leading to the upper floor, and the other down to the basement. At the far end of the hallway, I was also spotted what appeared to be a circular window. Moonlight was falling through the wooden grates, bleaching the carpet surface below it. Dang, this place got a lot bigger than I thought. It might be rather big, but its layout is actually pretty simple. The dining hall lies at the end of the hallway. That's where the others are waiting. Please follow me. And with this, Runa began to move ahead at a leisurely pace. Barachan and I followed her, letting our eyes slide across all the numbered doors as we passed on the way. How big's this place anyway? Like, how many people could stay here at the same time? According to this map, there were exactly 42 guest rooms. Some of them be doubles though, right? Since I was kind of interested in the resort's layout myself, I'd already taken out the pamphlet again to study the included map. I stopped near one of the candle stands for a moment to have a better look at it, and Barachan and Runa gathered around me, peeking over my shoulders. There are 12 guest rooms on the first floor. And a total of 20 on the second floor, and... Exactly 10 on the third floor. So a total of 42 guest rooms. Taking into account the number of lockers in the reception, however, this resort should have room for about... It said 50. 50 guests. 
Oh, you have a keen eye, Shimpuki san. Did you actually count the lockers in the reception? Well, you're quite right. This resort has enough room for a total of 50 guests. While most of the guest rooms are made for only one person, the rooms on the third floor are actually for two people each. They look like it. <coughs> Indeed, there were definitely a lot less rooms on the third floor, but to compensate for their lack of numbers, they were twice as big. Those are also the rooms we're staying, correct? Yes. I think it should be room 302, but you might want to check with Miyamoto-san later, just to make sure. Alright. In any case, it's just as you said. The layout of this place is really simple. By the way, do all these rooms have some super fancy theme to them? You know, like a room that looks like the interior of a submarine, or maybe one that sports some wicked space design with stars and shit painted onto walls and ceiling? Uh, unfortunately, no. While the room on the third floors are designed rather individually, not to such a great extent, they merely differ in colour and furniture. As for the guest rooms on the first and second floors, they are more or less identical, I'm afraid. Oh, nut bunnies. What about a basement, though? The basement? Yes, I want to know what it looks like. Sick. Whoa, looks like this is a little more complicated. I don't see any other guest rooms at all. Most of the rooms in the basement are for staff only. Except for the rooms on the left half. As you can see, there is a bar, as well as a couple of rooms for recreational activities. Dang, they even got karaoke rooms here? We totally gotta to make use of them. And what's that? Is that a staircase in the food storage? Indeed. It connects directly to the kitchen on the first floor. Makes sense. Ah, for reals, man? That's kinda nifty. A shortcut for the kitchen staff, huh? Gotta say, this place is actually pretty cool. So, like, do a lot of people usually come here? Apparently a lot of school classes visit here during summer and winter excursions. As far as I know, this is the only time the resort is actually booked out. Nevertheless, it does seem to get a lot of customers throughout the year. Most are drawn here by the famous hot springs and historical sites. It's also an ideal place for hiking. I see. That'd be neat if our classes would come here too sometime. I closed the map and put the pamphlet back in my pocket. As we continued down the hallway, Barachan began burying Runa's Burying Runa under enormous piles of questions, she wanted to know literally everything about this resort, ranging from what a normal workday for the staff was like, to what kinds of foods were usually served for dinner. I honestly felt sorry for Runa, who tried to answer everything to the best of her abilities, but unfortunately couldn't in most cases. She wasn't an employee, after all. She'd only been here a couple of times herself, and merely to help Rai with the preparations for the party. I'm truly sorry, Akadori-san. That's all I can tell you. It's okay. Sorry for machine gunning you with questions. I was just kind of curious. Now you might find some additional information in that booklet Miyamoto-san gave you. Hmm? Wait, was that...? Yes, no doubt about it. Three. You've got to know more about the details. Two. You should ask Miyamoto-san. One. Should be able to... Aku! <laughs> what the hell? Started almost to death by the sudden ear-shattering scream, Barachan stumbled backwards directly into my arms and... Bury me right under herself on the cold, uncomfortable floor. Once again suffering under a radical reduction of my air supply, I tried pushing her off me. Unfortunately, she was too heavy to move for my frail arms. I guess some higher power really wanted me to die of suffocation tonight. <laughs> ah, coo -coo 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 -coo. When I looked up, I could see that little devil standing there, letting her annoying laugh echo through the hallway at full blast. She began furiously waving that weird stick in her hands all around. It had a blade made of poorly cut cardboard pieces slathered in a thick coat of silver paint attached to it. Was that pitiful result of lacking craftsmanship supposed to be a scythe? Your souls are now Mikas! <laughs> While she continued laughing as loud and annoying as humanly possible, Runa, who had been almost scared to death herself, slowly managed to get back to her feet. She wiped the dust off her butt and after taking a deep breath, faced our reckless attacker with a rather reproachful look. Tamashi-san? Don't scare us like that. Seriously? That ain't funny, girl. You almost gave me a heart attack. Barachan also managed to rise back to her feet. Unlike Runa, she was still a little shaken, though. After her breathing rhythm had somewhat stabilized, she turned around to check on me, but the second she laid her eyes on me, her expression was once again struck with horror as she realized I was still lying flattened on the floor. Panicking, she quickly grabbed my hand and helped me get back to my feet as well. Sorry for stamping you. You alright? Yeah, just feeling a little squishy. Oh, your bones are probably broken. Did Mika give you a good scare? He sure did. Where the heck did you even come from? 
Mika just came from the toilet where she saw you and thought to herself, they'd make for some easy targets. After even more laughter coming gushing forth from the crescent-shaped mouth, she simply stared at me with her emerald green eyes filled with her self-satisfaction and hint of triumph. This girl, Mika Tamashi, age 14, cool. Dislikes perverts. Everybody dislikes perverts. Mika Tamashi, another one of my classmates. Silly beyond belief and well known for her continuous shenanigans. She was even worse than my mother. Playing pranks on people and scaring the living daylights out of them was her favourite sport. Sneakily smuggling spiders into your lunchbox or depositing dead cicadas in your shoes were just some of her lesser crimes. Most disturbing of all, however, she even took pride in the fact that she even scared everyone in my class to such an extent that they had to literally wet their pants and run off in tears. Well, every single one of them but me. What's the matter? Did Mika scare Riker so much she lost her voice? Not really. Huh? With her eyes narrowed and a fang-like tooth sticking out between her devilishly contorted lips, Mika suddenly seemed even more satisfied than just a second ago. Is that true? Next time you'll sneak up someone, sneak up on someone, try matching your footsteps to your victims. Once I noticed a quick pair of ex extra footsteps behind us, he lost every chance to startle me. Aku. Mika didn't expect anything less from Raiko. However, yelling as loud as she could, she raised her arm to point her index finger directly at my nose, almost as though she was trying to poke a hole in my face. <laughs> Mark Mika's words. Tonight will be the night Mika will show Raiko what true terror is. Mika will shock Raiko and make her cry out in torment and despair. <laughs> I gladly accept your challenge. Aku? The air around us was slowly getting tense as we silently stared at each other for a while. Countless times before she has tried to startle me but never succeeded. She just kept making the smallest of mistakes which prepared me for her assaults. I didn't know what exactly her deal was but it apparently bugged her quite a bit that she hadn't been able to scare me yet and judging from her resolute expression she definitely wanted to change that tonight. I normally wouldn't have cared for this nonsense but a part of me felt like I didn't want to lose to her so yes. This wasn't just some childish game anymore. It was a matter of pride for both of us. Um, excuse me, but would you mind sorting this out later, Shinpuki-san, Tamashi-san? We really should keep the other shouldn't keep the others waiting any longer than necessary. Okay, I could get good. Then please follow me. After exchanging one last glance of spark-emitting rivalry, Mika and I turned away from each other to follow Runa and Barachan, who'd already moved on ahead. Maybe this night was going to become a little interesting after all. Cool, more stuff. Now consisting of four people again, our little group continued down the long, candlelit hallway and eventually reached a huge set of sliding doors near its end. Light was shimmering through the translucent paper windows and I could hear a jumble of muffled voices coming from the other side. When Runa stepped forward and pressed her hands against the wooden framework, I felt a sudden surge of nervousness rush through my body. I knew that Taika was here and that Kenji and his gang weren't, but there were another four of my classmates behind those doors and I had no idea who. I guess it shouldn't have mattered since I didn't have much to do with anyone anyway. Nevertheless, I could think of a few faces I ne didn't necessarily want to see. A wave of bright lights splashed all over us we finally set foot into the dining hall. First thing I noticed was how big it was, but I guess that shouldn't have come as a surprise. After all, entire school classes had to fit in there somehow. What I definitely hadn't expected though was how lovingly detailed it was decorated. Yes, it looks lovely. Candles, carved pumpkins and paper lanterns were everywhere, painting the entire dining hall in a faint orange glow. There were also dozens of handmade paper cutouts in the shape of spiders, ghosts, bats, witches and skeletons. On the table hanging from the ceiling and even stuck to the walls and windows. Someone had clearly put an enormous amount of time and effort not only into decorating this place, but also crafting the actual decorations. Whoa. Oh my god. Th this... this is... this is freaking awesome. I'm glad to hear you like it. Please be sure to let Miyamoto-san know as well. She was working tirelessly to prepare all of this in, in time. I totally will. Dang, this is so cool, don't you think, Raikachan? It is. Oh, hey there. Naturally, it didn't take long for the others who had already been here to notice the pack of people who just flocked into the room. The first one to jump in front of us is a girl with pink coloured hair, dressed in a white blood-stained kimono, identical to Runa's. Happy Halloween! Yo, Momo-chan! Sup? And happy Halloween to you too. Hi, oh, hey, thanks. Mori Momoko. Age 14, music. 
Likes dating sims and playing guitar. Dislikes loneliness and public displays of affection. Momoko Mori, one of the most popular girls at our school. Although she can be a little different among her close friends, for the most part Momoko was a rather shy and quiet individual. As a result, she'd flown under everyone's radar until just recently, when she caught people's attention during the cultural festival. Most of us had known she was a member of the music club, but it had been a huge surprise to learn she was also a guitarist in one of the school's girl bands. The Momoko on stage had seemed different to the one I knew from class. No one would have thought her capable of performing in front of such a huge crowd, which was why she had not just become the talk of the class, but the entire school. Apparently she was even receiving love letters on a regular basis now. I see you wearing the same outfit as Runa. Is he planning to insist, huh? Yep. It would have been lame to dress up as one of the sisters alone, so I asked Runa if she wanted to play with the part of my twin. I didn't really know what else to dress up as, so I was fine. it was fine with me. I have a soft spot for kimonos anyway. Haha. <laughs> Here, look. Giggling, the two kimono girls stepped next to each other. Momoko grabbed the ends of the red ropes, which were wrapped around her waist, and quickly tied them together. As they proudly presented themselves to us, I finally began to remember. Twin Sisters Sacrifice, Golden Butterfly. It was the title of a rather successful video game. A horror game to be precise. The two main characters were twin sisters wearing white bloodstained kimonos, just like Momoko and Runa. The plan of the game focused the plot of the game focused on the dilemma of the two sisters who lived in an old fashioned village deep within a dense forest. It was said that beneath the village there existed a portal leading to the underworld. In order to keep it closed and prevent the sins of the dead from leaking out and consuming the living, a ritual had to be performed once every decade. Unfortunately, this ritual required a pair of twins to kill each other. Needless to say, it was a very sad and dramatic story. What were the sisters going to do? Kill each other for the sake of their village? Or escape together only to save themselves? I actually had no idea how the story ended, since I neither played the game nor seen the recent anime adaptation, <laughs> but I didn't really feel the need to find out. The tale about two sisters killing each other was the last thing I was keen on exploring. What do you say? You put a lot of effort into these costumes. Indeed. We try to replicate the kimonos as accurately as possible. It proved to be rather frustrating at times, but I quite enjoyed sullying the fabric with all this blood. Why did it make me feel somewhat uneasy hearing her say that with such a cheerful expression adorning her face? Nice. I think you did an awesome job. Now if you two had the right hair colour, the cosplay would be perfect. Actually, I bought two matching green wigs, but unfortunately forgot them at home. I cannot believe I was so careless. Once again, my deepest apologies, Mori-san. Oh, Runa. I told you, it's fine. Stop worrying about that. It's no biggie, really. Even if you say that, I can't help but feel quite ashamed of myself. After all, I was the one who claimed to know where to get the perfect wigs and promised to buy them. And then I forgot them at home, even after you reminded me just this morning not to. It's alright, Runa. Sure, it would have been neat to have them, but it's fine, really. Yeah, you two still look majorly awesome. And really friggin' cute. <laughs> of course. My peach always looks cute, no matter what she's wearing. And super sexy, too. Hero, stop it. I told you not to say such weird things in front of the others. Why not? It's the truth. It's embarrassing. Oh, how I love it when you blush, my sweetheart. Oh my god, are you James from Team Rocket? Hiro Shirataki. Just like smart asses. <laughs> I can imagine. That Dracula flashing his sharp teeth with a smug grin was Hiro Shirataki. Being a total show-off who greatly enjoyed bathing in the spotlight, this guy couldn't stop himself from bragging about anything imaginable. From his grades and sports achievements to even trivial things such as being in the first in class to own the new banana tablet phone. <laughs> Naturally, he also seized every opportunity to remind us of the fact that he was the lucky guy who had conquered the heart of the most desired girls at school. I had no clue what Momoko saw in him, to be honest. Sure, he did get good grades, and was quite an athlete, and I guess he didn't look bad either. But, did that really make up for his obnoxious attitude? Definitely not. <laughs> I already don't like him. Hero, seriously, stop it. He's right, though. You do look cute and sexy in absolutely everything you wear, my dear. Especially when you're blushing. Look, it's fucking Sailor Pluto. Carmen, not you too. You're such a lucky guy, Hero. Maybe you do realize that that and won't do anything about making... Won't think about making my little cutie here cry. Making her cry? Yes, we're doing something as devious as, I don't know, cheating on her or something. Are you nuts? Why the heck would I do that? My little peach is everything a guy could dream of. I totally hit the jackpot here. Indeed. Stop it, you two. You're embarrassing me. Oh, poor little Momo. I'm sorry, Tee. But there's no denying the truth, you sexy beast. Carmen! Carmen Iger. 
drama. Uh, typical. <laughs> the witch breaking out in the laughter was Carmen Iger, Momoka's best friend. The two of them were pretty close, like Barachan and me, or uh, Ryan Runa. Therefore, it struck me as odd that Carmen wasn't playing the role of Momoka's twin. I mean, she really looked the part, sporting not only the right hairstyle, but even colour. On top of on the topic of playing a character, however, Carmen was actually the vice president of the drama club and a talented actress. I'd seen her performing during a cultural festival and certainly had to admit as much. I'll say she didn't seem to care much for theatrics, though. Unlike her best friend, Carmen was far less reserved and much more straightforward, with no qualms about speaking her mind or any desire to mince her words. Rather than talk about you behind your back, she was the type to tell you straight to your face how she felt about you. That's why I knew absolutely certainly that she couldn't stand me. Anyway, what's that snorefish and Pookie doing here? Hmm? Oh. Raiko-chan, I didn't even see you there. Were you trying to hide behind Mika? As a matter of fact, I was. <laughs> Curses, why'd she moved away? Well, I guess sooner or later they would have noticed me anyway, so... Hello. I never expected to see you here, Miss Grumpy. Hey, Carmen. What? It's the truth. She always looks so dead and emotionless. I bet she doesn't even know what the word fun means. You probably don't even want to be here, right? Little Miss Grumpy. She's right, though. I didn't know what to reply. I mean, she was right. I didn't want to be here, but... I also didn't want to admit that in front of her, because I was, that was exactly what she wanted to hear. What was her problem, anyway? She didn't know me. Sounds like she does know you. <laughs> I was the kind of person whose emotions played out more on the inside rather than the outside. So even if I was having fun, I didn't it didn't necessarily show. Some people were like this. Is that a crime? Actually, I kind of wanted to tell her exactly that, but it was Momoku who acted first in order to smash that sudden moment of tension. Oh my, Raiko-chan. I only realise now, those ears... Curse is not this again. I honestly would have rather had Carmen continue bitching at me than someone say, They look so cute. Can I touch them? That you, of all people, would wear something like this. <laughs> I know, right? I was, I was surprised as well. But they do suit our little grumpy cat. Huh. <laughs> I guess so. Those ears sure are cute, but they fit my sexy peach a lot better. Here, I stop talking such nonsense. Yeah, I know. They obviously look best on me, but that's not that's not even debatable. But I mean, like, if it wasn't for me, you'd rock them harder than anyone else. Oh, you. Anyway, I think it's a funny idea. You look so cute in that I could literally hug you to death. Oh, not again. Why? Just why was everyone gathered around me like I was some kind of theme park attraction? Can they just leave me alone? It's just a pair of stupid cat ears. Why was everyone making such a fuss about it? Just because I didn't seem like the kind of person to wear something like this. Ah, this is all Mum's fault. She's probably still laughing at home, playing this very scenario out in her head. Fucking the milkman. It was without a doubt that she... what she'd hoped for. Me becoming the centre of everyone's attention, getting riled up about it, and ultimately removing these obnoxious ears in a rage before running off in embarrassment while everyone was laughing at me. Sorry Mum, but I wasn't going to give you that satisfaction. Even though I really wanted to take off these accursed cat ears, at this point, I was out of the question. My pride simply didn't allow it. After everyone had seen me wear these ears, taking them off now would have equaled admitting embarrassment, which in turn would have made me even easier target for humiliation. So I was left with no choice but to wear these ridiculous ears proudly, my head held high, without leading on to my true feelings. Curse you, Mum. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, Passa? What's going on here? Sacre bleu. She... She's really wearing cat ears. What the fuck does that say? <laughs> uh, and just when I thought these things could get any worse, why was that guy here? Fuck! You look hot, Raikuchan. My coyones are itching and my cocks are twitching. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Kotoba Gaikoku. Likes learning new languages and watching porn. Dislikes wearing underwear. Jesus Christ. Gotoba Gaikoku, the resident perv. This guy seemed to waste every split second of his existence by fantasizing about the people around him. Not just the girls, but even the guys. Ideally, I wouldn't want to know about this, his dirty fantasies, but he ultimately, unfortunately possesses that annoying habit of letting everyone in on them. He would have earned some respect from me for his interest in foreign languages. After all, he wasn't just the best in English in our class, but even so went as far as to learn additional languages during his free time, including French, Spanish, and even German. Sadly, though, he usually limited their language to language they used to vulgarities and pickup lines only. Classy. Shit, you look. 
Oh my god. You look delicious. Seeing you like this makes me craze on go doki doki. <laughs> How about it, mon chéri? You already got the ears, but you still lack a tail. I don't know other languages, I only know English. And even that's questionable. <laughs> I'd be happy to attach mine to your cute little butt, if you know what I mean. Stop right there, villain. Huh? Mika-chan? Uh, getting jealous? Kien Sorge? Chica? You can play with my tail too. Oh crap. Kill him! So I don't have to try and read his lines anymore. What are you doing? W wait! Please, I just... That was just a joke. I... I... Slash. I yell out slash. Ouch! Using all his strength, Mika slammed her carelessly glued together cardboard scythe against Katova's chin. Sending him flying through the air and... Crashing onto the floor with a loud thud. With the hardest cardboard in the world. Moaning in pain, he began rolling around, hands tightly pressed to his mouth. Although he was afraid his jaw was going to fall apart the moment he let go. <laughs> Judging by that nasty noise, it produced upon impact with Katoba's foul mouth. Mika's scythe apparently didn't exist... It entirely consist of cardboard pieces made to look like metal. At least the stick itself was actually made of metal. Damn, poor bastard. Can't say I feel sorry for him, though. Yo, you look a lot better now, hero. Whatever perverted stuff you have to say, Mika's there to slash away. Ouch, Mika. I guess he deserved it for that comment, but don't go killing him now. Taiko Kikia. Likes cats helping others and studying. Oh, how lovely. Injustice lies in space flight? Why space flight? There he was, the last of Rise party attendees, and probably her most important guest. Her big crush, Taiko Kikia. To Kikai, sorry. Kikai. Just like that, it was the case with most of the classmates. We really talked to each other. Nevertheless, he was the only person besides Ryan Runa who greeted and smiled at me whenever our paths crossed. He also often came to my aid when someone like Carmen was harassing me, and generally seemed like seemed to enjoy helping others wherever he could. Out of all the guys in our class, he was definitely the most mature, seeming quite a bit older than he actually was. Counter the fact that how handsome he looked, and unlike Momoka's love for Hero, I could definitely understand why Rai had fallen for him. You alright? Missing any teeth? I think my jaw is dislocated. Oh, well, you had it coming. You should really learn to uh, choose your words more carefully, especially with Mika around. Indeed, this wasn't the first time she smacked him for verbally harassing a girl. It happened on a regular basis, at least four, or s four to six times a day at school. This is one trait I truly valued about Mika. She couldn't stand this kind of behaviour and punished it brutally. Unfortunately, Katoba was the kind of guy who didn't seem to learn his lesson. Maybe enjoys being beaten. Anywho, hi there, Raikachan. Uh, hello. Curses. Even though I had told Rai I didn't possess any romantic interest in him, for some reason I always got a little nervous whenever he talked to me. I can feel the warmth increasing on my face, as it most likely lit up like a warning light. I guess it's just went to prove how charming he was. Glad to see you came. Of course, same goes for you too, Nabara. Hey, I wanna get Chanified too. Chanified? Oh, alright. Glad to see you, Nabara chan Better? Yes. Haha. <laughs> so, like, where's Recon? I thought she'd be with you. That's her party, and now that her guests are all gathered here, she just disappears on us? Miyamoto-san is just taking care of a few things. She'll be here in a couple of minutes. So we're back to waiting again? I'm terribly sorry for the inconvenience. Don't be, Runa. It's not your fault. Anyway, guess I'll go back, go and get a few more snacks. Seems like it'll take a bit longer until we finally get dinner. And if you keep eating so many snacks, you'll get fat. Momo. <laughs> sorry. I mean to say, get even fatter. What? Momo, why you... Okay, that's it. Carmen's hand quickly shot forward, aim at Momo's cheek to give it a good old pinch. The giggling girl managed to evade the attack, however, by simply ducking under it. While Carmen still surprises her opponent, opposite's remarkable reflexes, Momoka snuck, stuck out her tongue and lifted her kimono a little and dashed off as fast as she could. Outraged, the witch immediately gave chase, while everyone else was watching in amusement. It sounds like everyone's buggering off so we can wrap up the episode. Oh my. Well, it's just like Aiga-san said. It might be a while until Miyamoto-san returns, so until then, why don't you take a look around the dining hall? Shimpuku-san? Akadori-san? Feel free to try some of the snacks we've prepared as well. However, I'd advise you not to eat too much. We'll be having dinner in a... Tamashi-san. 
You can't eat those. Panic suddenly slapped onto her face. Runa quickly hurried off towards Mika, who was apparently trying to eat one of the mini carved pumpkin decorations. <laughs> Honestly, that girl. She's my favourite so far. <laughs> well, what do you think, Riker chan Wanna take a look around? We can also talk to the others and kill some time until we rise here. I don't really want to. Oh, come on. Since we're already here, we might as well talk to them. They're classmates, after all. Talking to our classmates, huh? I wasn't really the kind of person to just go up to others and start conversations. When someone came to me, I could easily reply, but starting a conversation myself? No. I wasn't good at that, unless it was with Barachan or I had a clear purpose in mind. Like asking the stranger for directions or something like that. Was starting a conversation just for the sake of conversing about random topics? No. I didn't enjoy small talk. I never had a clue what to talk about. However, since there wasn't anything else to do and I was already feeling bored, talking to the others maybe wasn't such a bad idea to kill some time. Besides, Barachan was with me and she loved to talk, so I probably didn't have to worry about it too much. So what do you say? Alright, might as well try and make the best of it, I suppose. Damn straight. An investigation sequence is about to start. Do you wish to read an explanation? Yes. During an investigation, you can examine your surroundings and talk to people in the vicinity to gather clues, evidence, and information. Simply move the cursor around and click on any highlighted objects to examine them. You can also change your view by clicking on the magnifying glass icon in the investigation menu at the top of the screen. If you want to talk to the other characters, click on the speech bubble icon instead, and a list with everyone you can talk to will appear. If you want to end the investigation, simply click on the check mark icon. Note, however, that sometimes you might have to fulfill, fulfill certain conditions before you're allowed to do so. During the following investigation, that won't be necessary though. If you want to continue with the actual story, feel free to click on the check mark icon and skip right ahead any time. Alright, we're going to wrap this one up here. Seems like the perfect spot, doesn't it? And then we'll do the investigation in the next one. Awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for getting out there and I'll see you in the next one.